So I was recently asked what I think of CVT transmissions, that's continuously variable transmissions. So in fairness, I have to say I haven't got very much experience with them, which is why I've not covered it yet. But I do have some experience with it. I've done some research for this video for you so that I can pass on the information I have found about CVT transmission systems. So we're going to look at what they are, why they work, how they work, how they're different from the conventional gearbox that you might expect in a car, even traditional automatic gearboxes as well. And then we're going to go on to what I consider to be whether they are good advancements in technology, why manufacturers actually fit them to cars, and some of the common issues and problems that you get from CVT transmission. So CVT transmissions are very different from the conventional system. So if you look at a bicycle, you'll be familiar with the concept of having different side gears at the front where you're pedaling and at the back driving the wheel. And by changing the size of those wheels, you can change the amount of torque or power that is going from the pedals. So if you're going uphill, you will typically want a smaller one at the front where your pedals are and a larger one at the back. So you've got more power to get up the hill. But if you want speed, you need a larger cog size at the front and a smaller cog size at the back. So the gear ratios help the car to keep within the power band to fully realize the power band of the engine themselves. Now, CVT is a continuously variable transmission system. It doesn't have the conventional steps. The weirdest thing that you will notice when driving one is that the car is speeding up, but the engine note is staying the same. It's maintaining the same RPMs. So it is continually adjusting the size of the front and the rear cogs within the gearbox to just maintain an optimum amount of torque and power to keep the car progressing. Decisions made will depend on the load, whether you're trying to accelerate, you're just cruising, and various other factors that are all fed into the computer via various sensors around the car. So how do they work? Well, there's effectively a very large belt between the two cogs. Now, the two cogs actually look a bit like flying saucers. They've got a slight curve on the inside. And by squishing the plates together, you will get the chain to rise up or sink down, changing the ratio of gears. So as the two, the front and the back move, the drive chain is taking a different path and different amounts of torque and power are going to the driven wheels at any specific time. So like a conventional gearbox, they will still use a torque converter. So the nice things about CVT transmissions are they are relatively cheap. Manufacturers have chosen them because they're cheap to make. You don't have the complexity of all the different gears, although there's a certain amount of complexity involved in driving the hydraulic systems that push these plates together and release these plates, allowing the gear ratios to actually change. It's quite nice driving one as well. The engine note is just smooth. You don't have the progression through the gears. If you like cruising smoothly and you like consistent engine noise, so it's not interrupting the pleasure you're getting from your car radio, a CVT transmission is probably the choice you should make. They're also generally more economical because the car can maintain an almost infinite ratio of the front and rear gears within the transmission. You can make better fuel economy using a CVT transmission. So CVTs are somewhat fragile, very aggressive driving or poor maintenance are the common factors that will cause problems within the CVT transmission. The other issue that you've got with a CVT transmission is the ability to service them and strip them down. They're effectively sealed for life units. There's not a lot of available parts that you can get to fix a CVT transmission. So in my experience, and please let me know in the comments if you're manufacturer or you have different experience to me, you have to replace the entire CVT gearbox. Repairs are usually not very economical to carry out. So the belt and the chain can start to wear, but that's not usually the cause of failure. It's usually down to the hydraulic systems driving those plates together to maintain the tension within the transmission system. So they are operating at very high pressures. They're very sensitive to having insufficient fluid within that system itself. And if leaks happen, it's going to completely mess up the operation of the CVT system. So it's fair to say that some manufacturers have been using CVT transmissions for many years. 
and have managed to build a very reliable design of CVT. And other manufacturers have been really struggling. So I've had a lot of negative feedback, for example, from Nissan owners on the CVT systems that they've used. I believe they also extended the warranty on the CVT systems to allay some people's concerns about reliability on those gearbox types. Companies like Toyota and Honda have very good reputations when it comes to CVT designs. And even in high performance engines, Subaru have got a sparkling CVT transmission option that is available now. So they've really come a long way over the years. Would I personally like one? Well, I don't. I prefer to have the gears to know the power band. I'm much more of a traditional driver. I'm not there for the economy. I'm not there for the quiet engine. I want to fully enjoy the car. And I just feel a CVT transmission takes some of that away from you as a driver. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you've got a CVT transmission, let me know how you feel about it. Is it affecting your driver's enjoyment of your car and your engine? So I hope you found this video useful and informative. I certainly discovered a lot of new things researching the CVT transmission setups. And I've got some ideas for other videos on other transmissions that I found while going through this never ending topic of gearboxes and transmissions on cars. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button. That really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting if you want to get the best performance and enjoyment out of your car. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.